The James and Greg Show. Hey everybody, you're back with us, the James and Greg Show. And we're here establishing one of the most premier moments of all time right now. This is the finale, the final, the ending, the closing of the BYB, everybody, the Backyard Boogie. And we're gonna sit here and we're gonna go over the Backyard Boogie and how it was brought about and where it's gonna go tomorrow. So, just sit back and relax and stay tuned to the James and Greg Show. Hey everybody, like I said, we had the finest people in the world here. We got Mr. Philip Shores and the one and only Byron Scott. And what we're doing here for 2019, y'all, we are actually having one of the biggest shindigs in town. We got a backyard boogie, baby. We got a backyard boogie. I think you did that, right? That's what we do. You know, um, it's just to bring, Inglewood's a real special place, especially for me. I'm just speaking for myself. You know, back there, I know I've got people back there that I've been knowing for like 50 years. I got my math teacher since the ninth grade over here, Mr. Our Lewis. Math Our math teacher. Hold on, Phil. What do you say? Our well, math you know, teacher. Right here, my house, he's my math teacher. <laughs> oh, my bad. My bad. No, I'm just kidding. You but know Phil. what? No, he been just like a, a, a real important part of our lives. Everybody know Mr. Lewis. You know, if so you the morning side, you know Mr. Lewis. So everybody comes to the backyard boogie. Well, yeah, you know, I mean... <laughs> well, not everybody. <laughs> you gotta be invited to the Backyard Boogie. You just can't show up to the Backyard Boogie because you went to Morningside High School. It don't work out that no, way. it don't work that way. It's a very special place to be. So, folks, you heard it. Just don't show up here because there's a lot of big buff guys here. Ass ain't getting in. It's that simple. You show up and think you're going to get in the Backyard Boogie because you went to Morningside in 1973. It don't work that way. Yeah, he's right. you to get in here. So 73 is a cutoff, y'all. So like he said, he said that there's uh, a lot of friends here. And I want to embark on YouTube's friendship because I see this is still the fourth, fifth time and it's Philip Shores or Byron Scott's Backyard Boogie. How long y'all been friends? Well, it's really Philip Shores slash Byron Scott Backyard Boogie. But Philip and I have been friends since we were 12 years old. So we're, we're talking about 46 years that we've been friends in Inglewood. And the thing that's so great about Inglewood, if you are an Inglewood guy, and you went to Morningside, and you were in the neighborhood when we grew up, you still one of the boys, no matter what. And when we come together, it don't matter if you've been an NBA champion, it don't matter if you've been working a, a nine to five, you still one of the boys. That's what's so special about Inglewood. When we come together, everybody's the same. And, and everybody has that humility, to be, you know, nobody's bigger than anybody. That's the beauty, that's the beautiful thing about Inglewood, that we all come together and we have a good time. That's an outstanding. Now, you got something to add to that, my friend? Of course, of course, of course. See, a lot of people think that, you know, Byron's my best friend because he's famous. Now, I'm just to set the record straight right now. I don't give a fuck. Byron was gonna be my best friend if he was a trash man. This is my boy. I've been knowing, I mean, we, let me tell you how I met Byron Scott. We was in the sixth grade. He had some lime green boots on, a high yellow shirt tied above the navel, and some purple shoes on. Purple shoelaces, excuse me. And I say, who this dude with these purple shoelaces over there shooting these jumpers? He's shooting jumpers from half court in the sixth grade. With a big ass afro with a comb in there. And I was like, dog. So after about nine three-pointers way back in the day, me and Anthony was like, damn, I guess we gonna pick him on my team. That's interesting and you that's say that. that's how it started for me and Byron. He's been my best friend ever since. Well, that's some nobility in Philip Shores to add a brother like that to his oh, roster of on. friends. Hey, man. <laughs> <laughs> he was pimping you. Hey, but let me well, ask y'all. Uh, like I say, we go way back like a, a receding hairline. <laughs> well, I know mine and went that's back. So that's, that's how far we go back. No, but I got nothing but real true love for Byron. But he know this. I don't even have to say this. this and, is and that's the way you feel too, I'm sure. That's my brother. You know, Philip, my brother, is like my boy McGee, Joe Malone, Chris Jackson, Mark McClammy, Chowder, McCormick, GG, GG, rest his, you know, rest his soul. But like I said, when you in Inglewood and you're a part of the Inglewood family, that, that's boys for life. That's how we are. And I, I, I like to second that motion. And, you know, with that, it sounds like a camaraderie uh, as well as a force. And then I, I want to add this to it. Because you said this man had on those kind of boots and purple or whatever color shoestrings those were. He was quite colorful. And you know he told me? Well, I was best dressed in Auburn, Utah. <laughs> That's what he told me. I said, well, you 
you know what, partner? Me and Anthony gonna go ahead and get you. We gonna get you a wardrobe. So we went to Zodi's and we borrowed him some clothes. And he was he was all good after that. Well, well, because you know that's a, that brother's standing out. So was it anybody that was bullying Byron? Are you serious? Let me ask Byron. That was bullying me? No. No. You, you got, you got, yeah, yeah, the only person that bullied me back in the day was Dorothy Scott. God rest, God rest my mother's soul. Even though I came from, even though I came Gladys McGee, Mama Shores, there, there was a few people that bullied me back in the day. Mama Glass, Mama Malone. But when we talk about the fellas bullying me, it, it never was, it, it was never something like that happening in Wood because when I met Philip, the first day I met Philip, and then I met Joe, and then I met Anthony Wilkerson. That never happened. They accepted me right away. And, and like you said, we've been boys ever since. That's funny though, man. That kind of wardrobe, you would think, yeah, y'all let him have it, Phil. Hey, but you know what? He was like, I'm proud of these lime green boots with these purple shoe strings. I told you I was best dressed in all in Utah. <laughs> so, you know, but uh, I mean, like, no, for real, for real. Like I said, that 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 Inglewood place is just it's just real special and to have all my boys. See, see, it's just me and Byron doing the interview. But we got a whole backyard. We got 50 years worth of friendship in that backyard. So. That's outstanding. Now the parks in Inglewood, I understand, were really big competitive parks because of what he wore and the way y'all were. Y'all established like saying, "Hey, we gonna do this." Me, you, Byron, Anthony alone was a force. But how did the parks get so popular? Well, see, it wasn't no, with no AAU back in them days, you know. So, Darby Park and Rogers Park was AAU. I mean, we had AAU players at the regular park. So now it's called AAU when you got um, all-star teams from all over the place. But come on, man, we had Byron Scott, Jay Humphrey, Rob Jackson. I mean, Anthony Rosser. We had, <laughs> we had superstars coming out the park. But you know what? B. Oh, Scotty was the best of all, and he know it. I, I, I can't uh I can't deny that. Listen, listen. We all of us we had some special talent when it came to sports. Phillip, hell of a football player, Chris, hell of a baseball player. I was pretty damn good in baseball myself, along with basketball. But we had just a ton of athletes all over the place. Six six out there, Sid, you know, Forrest out. I mean we had so many great athletes from Inglewood, it was unbelievable. So we knew that if we just if, if we stayed on that, that straight and narrow road, we're gonna have some guys that was gonna make it. And like I said earlier, you didn't necessarily have to make it in basketball. We've all been very successful in what we've done in life, not only from a business standpoint, but from a personal standpoint. And the good thing about it is that, like I said, we've always kept our heads, you know, level. You know, and, and that's the good thing about Inglewood. The reason why I brought the parks up because it starts from somewhere to get to the level of where you're from, of where you where you been where you went. Uh, and see, that's important to, to the people that are listening here is because some people don't understand that the park system takes you, if there's a correct system, it takes the talent that it recognizes and sends you out there by positive feedback. Did you guys get that from the park or did you just totally go up to those parks, play well as you say you guys did, and make those names, make those parks who they were? Well, I, I mean, the parks had a little bit to do with it, obviously from an organizational standpoint, but you got to understand, we had our own drive from the get-go. We had our own determination from the get-go. You know, so we all wanted to be successful. You know, so being in the park environment helped us because, again, it gets you to play in a team concept. But believe me, if the parks weren't there, we still would have been successful because we all had that drive to be successful. So that, that had a little bit to do with it, but, again, it comes down to the person. Excuse me, I like that. But I want to ask Phillips if he has a, a contrast to that or does he agree? Well, I mean, every, put it this way, everybody wanted to make it. I mean, in Inglewood, everybody thought they was good enough to make it, you know. But it's the ones who actually could, like, separate themselves. I can remember a few times, you know, we wanted to go do something else. And, and, and Byron was like, nah, you know what, I got to get these jumpers up. You know, nah, you know, I got to get up at, you know, 5.30 and, and, you know, get this work in. So when we might have been wanting to, you know, play with them girls back in the day, Byron's like, you know, I'll play with them girls later. You know, I got things to do. And he would separate himself from us and go handle his business. And see, that's why he is the successful person that he is. Now, is and you talking about some serious was discipline. Park. Was, the, was he going to the park? Did the parks do that? Of course it did. Because at our parks, I mean, 
And see, what's different, see, back in our days, you played football, basketball, baseball, you played all the sports. It wasn't nowadays, if you're a basketball player, you play basketball. If you're a football player, you play football. So, but when we grew up, you had baseball season, you had football season, you had track season. Hey, I haven't seen, how many times you knocked out Joe Malone? We had boxing season. So, I mean, we pretty much did it all as kids. And I guess you're using different muscles and different everything. So that's why I guess, you know, kids right now, they pull muscles a lot better. Because you're only working on the same ones. You know, so, but um, like I say, he had a, he had an incredible discipline about himself, and that's why, you know, he's a very- Outstanding, outstanding, I like that. Now, family. Now we know that Inglewood is known for having some families in there. Yeah. <laughs> and those, <laughs> but now, but the family of Inglewood seems to be uh, something that you just can't, you, you can't intercept, you can't dissect, you can't break apart, you can't pull apart, you can't even blow up. Now, did the Parks, did you guys, what caused this Inglewood to be such a family? Then name the, the gang out of Inglewood family. Well, I mean, everybody know about the gang Inglewood family, but when I say Inglewood family, I, this is my Inglewood family. You know, my, my, my Inglewood family. And you, I can go from, from family to family to name to name to name. It, we'd be here for hours. So, but we were just a real tight-knit group. And check this out, we still that way today. It's that and change. All right. Well, like we said earlier, when we talk about family in Inglewood, if, if I was at Mama Shore's house and I did something wrong, I got my ass whipped by Mama Shore's. If I was at Mama Malone's house, I got my ass whipped by Mama Malone. So they all knew, you know, the mothers all talked about, you know, if my, my son does something wrong at your house, tear his ass up. You know, so that, that to me right there is family. Because we all had a, a tremendous amount of respect for each other, each other's families. Each other. I mean, like I said, I would go over to Phil's house and I would say, hey, Mama Shores. Because to me, that was like my other mother. You know, so that's where our family, our family is so deep that it went that deep. You know what I mean? So we'll, we'll, we'll always be that way. And today, you go in the backyard boogie, you're going to see 95% of these people are family. And I'm witnessing that, y'all. So my viewers, you have to understand, if you want anything to last, you got to start with a family. Now, we had a guy in our family. And you said, you mentioned his name earlier. You confirmed it. But Anthony Wilkerson, if he was here today, would he see it the way we see it? Would he be here? Uh, you know, how do you think Anthony would have handled the whole deal with you making it to the NBA? He would have been just like Phil. Been happy as hell for me, happy as hell for Inglewood. He would be up here joking and, and smoking and drinking just like the rest of us. Uh, Hey, hey. Anthony was an unbelievable brother. We lost him way too early, way too early. Great athlete and could box. Don't don't get that twisted too. Anthony could throw them things back in the day. But I wish that that Anthony was here. I wish that Gigi was here. You know, because you're talking about two of the brothers that we miss dearly. That every day, you know, especially with Gigi, because he just passed recently. You know, I, I take a golf trip every year that Gigi was a part of. This year it was special for us because it was probably the second year that he wasn't with us. First tee shot, you know, we, we dedicated to Gigi. You know, so he's always in our memory, just like Anthony. Excellent, excellent. And your, your memories of Anthony? Well, I mean, Anthony was my best friend. I mean, I, I was with Anthony like every single day. And I guess, you know, the way our, our values and the way we were brought up, we try to do the same for our own kids. So, I mean, it ain't no manual on how to raise kids, but I want to raise mine exactly how I was raised. So, you know, you could, when it comes to, to parents, I used to go over to Byron's house when he wasn't even home. Byron be gone, and Mama Scott be, come on up in here. Had me some good. <laughs> but no, I, I, I would go over there all the time. And see, that's what you call a family. Byron didn't have to be home for me to sit down and hang out with Mama Scott, and she asked me how am I doing, you know, homework done, you know, we, we, we was just, we was just, it, like I say, you know, I can't say nothing but good things. Well, that's cool, man, but when I, when you said Anthony, when he said Anthony, I, I just was compelled to ask you about Anthony. And can I ask you guys, how old was Anthony when he passed? When he passed? What was it, sixth grade? Was it fifth, sixth or something? The summer, I remember the summer, the summer of us going to leave the ninth grade, going to take grade. So he was 14, 15. He was about 14 to 15, but Anthony was like our first um, feel of death. How it felt to lose somebody, you know. We were all pretty much trying to come into our own. You know, you're about that 14, 15 year old age right, right there. But he put death out there and we was like, whoa, you know. 
you actually can die at a young age. And we all missed him. And but you know what? I think we all started maturing after that. You know, there was a maturing, you know, um, um, little, 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 little part that went with all of us after that because we knew that Anthony wasn't coming back. So, yes, exactly. Death is that way you don't come back. And, and in closing, Anthony's story, I saw a picture with you and Anthony showing your biceps, man. <laughs> well, you know, we always we, we always have a competition on who had the biggest arms. He had me back in them days, but you know, hey, it's still all good. You remember that picture, Brian? I, I do, and I remember them always flexing, trying to see who had the biggest arms <laughs> any damn way. They, they could be walking up the street flexing just to see who had the biggest arms, you know. Time, I wasn't trying to join in because I, I, had, I, I had nothing to show for. But listen, everybody, uh, we, we mentioned it, people. I might as well ask this one. Who remembers Sherelle Williams? I remember Sherelle. Oh my God, you bring up Sherelle Williams. What kind of question is this? <laughs> yeah, we remember Sherelle Williams. What y'all remember about Sherelle Williams? a long time ago but you know yeah she was she was one of our favorites in the neighborhood <laughs> she was fine that's all hey, that's all you gotta remember you see everybody he can work produce all kinds of stuff yes it does morningside high morningside high y'all graduated in 1979 do y'all ever relate morningside to be a low uh learning school or was morningside the best high school you could have ever ever crossed paths with for me i don't i don't i don't hey i i, I couldn't see myself going anywhere else but Morningside High School. If I had it to do over again, I would go to Morningside High School. Morningside High had all my boys there, number one. He had a great coach and Coach Franklin there, number two. When I played baseball, uh, Coach Barnes was there, number three. So I had all the learning and teaching that I needed when I was at Morningside High School. So I, I could never see, if I, if I can go back 40 years, would I go to another high school? No, because Morningside gave me, gave me the determination, gave me the toughness, to see my way through all the obstacles that I had to go through to get to the NBA. So I wouldn't change it for anything in the world. That was good. What about you, sir? Well, I feel the same way. I mean, to me, there was only one high school in Inglewood. And that was more side. And, you know, see, nowadays, you know, and I'm guilty of that too, but kids go to all, nobody goes to the school in their neighborhood no more. You know, you send kids all over the place to try to, you know, get that advantage to better yourself. But no, nah, if it was going to happen for us, it was going to happen that morning side, you know. And if you could do it all again, would you attend morning side again? Oh, 200%. Y'all heard it, folks. Morningside Monarchs is the school to go to, so enroll your, your kids now. <laughs> and now, first and foremost, I mean, last question about Inglewood is 3rd Avenue. That's the street you live on. That's the street you visited all the time. What made 3rd Avenue the street everybody wanted to sit on? Well, I mean, if you looked up and down the block, you had Alvin Steen, you had Nat Dancy, you had Philip Shores, you had... Fred Glass, you had Joe Malone, Wayne Malone, Duke, Duke Harris, Billy Christian across the street. I mean, we had a whole bunch of people on morning, on, on 3rd Avenue, so we would all just congregate. But we wouldn't just stay on 3rd Avenue. We wanted the 6th Avenue, 5th Avenue. I mean, we just wanted all through the avenues. We was just kids, just just, just migrating through that city of Inglewood. I didn't think I would ever leave Inglewood, but, you know, we got older and got married, and, you know, I wanted to do other things, but 3rd um, Avenue was very special. Was that I'm your on third, on 3rd Avenue. Was that your attraction to all them characters he named? Yeah, I mean, all the athletes I had on 3rd Avenue, all my friends were on 3rd Avenue. Joe had the basketball court in the back on 3rd Avenue. All the street football games we played on 3rd Avenue. So we did everything on 3rd Avenue because, like you said, the majority of the guys were on 3rd Avenue. So it was just, it was just the easiest place to be and, and still have fun and still have competition in basketball and football. And I remember People would migrate to Third Avenue because you guys were there, you know, playing those games. I mean, you had First Ave coming over, Lloyd and Floyd. You had Second Avenue peeking around the corner, and then they run back. You had Fourth Ave, Anthony and his crew, and Fifth Ave, Ron Lewis and his crew. You had them all. So, but in the, when, the, when the smoke was all clear, y'all was writing pro on the basketballs and footballs on football on what? Writing pro. On the football and the basketball on what street? Third Avenue. That was the place to be. Third Avenue. <laughs> and it came true, people. He went pro, Oklahoma Sooner. It's all good. We got people in here that made it in the NL. And people made it in the NBA. I don't got no hockey players out there, but if they wanted to be hockey players, they could have been that too. We forgot about Ron Brown. Uh, we, 
got track. We got football. We, uh, we, we, he was on Third Avenue, you know. And Dale Thompson. Dale Thompson here with the Denver Broncos. We, Olympic gold medalist. How you going to have Ron Brown and Byron Scott come from, like, two blocks from each other, you know? That's just kind of the athletes that they produce. And there's two really good athletes right there, you know, that Johnny Sutton and that big Brad Russ. So they taught us how to play these sports, you know? We looked up to them. Those were our, you know, mentors, not role models. So can't forget about that. And I've talked to those two gentlemen, and both of them zeroed in on Third Avenue. They know Freddie Bussey, Ralph Simmons, Alvin Steen, and they was there cornered with them on Third Avenue. So it's a miracle, but it actually is a true story, people. And, you know, did it start your dream? Did you accomplish your dream? Did Third Avenue, is it in your dream? Third Avenue was going to always be in my dream because it was a part of the process of getting to the next level for me. You know, so Third Avenue made me get to the NBA. It helped me get to the NBA. It molded me to get to the NBA. You know, because of all the great guys that we had a chance to play against, all the competition that we had on Third Avenue, like Phil said, you know, we had guys that we could look up to that, that, that paved the way and left a great example. When we talk about the Suttons, so I'm about to whip their ass in golf one of these days real soon. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, they know it, they know it, but I'm just saying, Third Avenue, big reason I was in the NBA. And your dream, sir, was that established on Third Avenue? And did, are you happy with the dream? Do you still dream about that? Um, yeah, I mean, but you know, I see. I came from Watson. That's when they had that AB. So I was actually got skipped a grade. So I was always younger than everybody, but nobody really knew that because I was, you know, I was that kind of athlete, you know. And doing your thing. Well, you ain't doing my thing, you know. So if you look back, I was started at Morningside like when I was 14 or 13 or something like that, you know. So. You know, I was I was a little younger, but you know, I still had to hold my own because when well, nobody gonna just take it easy on you because you're younger. And that's you, just you in that so. class, you in that class. So, but um, competing against people like Byron and and, 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 and Roller Tatum and, and Dale Thompson and Ron Brown, like that's will make you better. And if you don't get better by then, then you just don't got it. But you and know, people, I didn't have it. Yeah, and people. This is the kind of aspirations that we want everybody to get out of this interview. We don't want to look down on you or make it seem like this is astronomical or out of reach. These gentlemen are coming to you with the reality. They're family, they had dreams, they had parts, just like what you have. You just have to take use and use them. Now, I want to ask you a question. What is the future for you gentlemen? Y'all y'all going to start your own mall, your investment firms? I don't know. I can see you two staying together forever. Oh, we're going to be together forever no matter what. You know. And, you know, we, we, we both stay in our own lanes. We do our own things. I still got things I'm doing from a business aspect. Still working, you know, for ESPN, having fun doing that. But for me, really, my, my aspirations for here, from here on out is really just to enjoy life. Really, it's just enjoy life, enjoy my grandkids, watch them grow up, and have a better life, and better beginnings than I had. But to also keep investing and doing things that I want to do to make sure that their future is even brighter than mine. So, I, I you know... I've had a good life already, you know, but the one thing I do know and understand that I still got a lot of living left to do and I'm going to enjoy every minute of it. That's well put. And another thing I want to tell all the fans out there, Byron Scott's been acting. His acting is phenomenal. I watch him. I've been involved in the entertainment business for a while now. And he got some chops there, Junior. You got some chops on film, on camera. <laughs> I'm just being me. That's all it is. And Phil, sir. You plan on being with Byron forever? What's your endeavors? I know you got a son in basketball, my man. What's the future? I mean, well, as far as being, I mean, that's like you say, to the casket drop. I mean, Byron and 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 everybody that we've mentioned on Third Avenue, Fourth Avenue, I'm gonna be with them for the rest of my life. I'm not going. Right now, I'm just trying to retire. I'm trying to get that check and ain't got to work every morning, get that bread, so I can, you know, pick up that golf club and get out there and do my thing. But as far as, you know, um, um, Byron and, and all our close friends, I'm never, ever, they're going to be my boys until I die, you know. And whoever goes first, then we're going to attend that funeral and we're going to keep it going, going, going. And the last man standing, well, he's going to tell, you know, stories about all of us, you know. So whoever that may be. Folks, you heard it. You got the honest, real truth out of some of Inglewood's finest. In the backyard boogie, I hate to tell you this, it's, it's ended. This is the finale, the finito. Sayonara. We out of here. Until the next one. Until the next one. <laughs> but as far as I know right now, it's a done dada. Hey, but it's been fun. It's been a fun ride. We got some truth out of it. And we got these gentlemen telling you their hearts, their soul. And if you're watching, Byron's TV show or the TV show that he's on on, on uh, cable network. 
East telling the truth. Philip Shore is here. When you watch this video, you see the backyard boogie. He did this on his own dome. Phil, you're a genius, man. Nobody can bring this many people together from that far back. So that's a genius. Oh, they, that's incredible, man. That's incredible. Phil Shore's from the Gills more. And folks, I'm just here in the middle, just, just trying to be the conduit to bring it from here to you. So all I can say is the James and Greg Show, we just be honest with you. We don't script nothing. I got some cue cards here, but that's just some topics. I ain't wrote down nothing. In fact, ain't shit on here. I was lying. I want to tell y'all we love you. James and Greg Show, we out of here. No, it's nice to see old family and friends, you know, back in the day from Morningside. Hey. So we're excited to be here at this beautiful occasion, man. It's hey. awesome. I, listen, man, I came out. I came out from Brooklyn, New York, man, to go to college out here. And the coach had people in Inglewood. He put me in Inglewood. And uh, I fell in love with the fucking city. I never went back. It's like uh, Dave Johnson, Louis Carr, Brian Kirkland. Uh, BK brought me to him to get my hair cut. What's up? How you doing? John Sutton, Ball 76, 76. I mean, 76, Q side. Ah! Yeah, Red Rush, 74. Yeah. 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 Rush, class of 75. Peace. I to the Q, nigga. Still here. So I told you that they made me an honorary Q.
like to thank her for all her hard work. All her hard work. Lady of the house, right here. It's all right in. Thanks for the door now. Bye-bye. <laughs>